You're watching Plant Identification Through Personal Investigation with Angeline Whitmire. This plant portrait is for Carolina Allspice, Calicanthus floridus. Carolina Allspice is native to the eastern region of the United States. An alternative common name, sweet shrub, is an acknowledgement of the aroma of its blooming flowers. This shrub grows to a height of about 6 to 9 feet, although it can reach a height of 12 feet. In the spring, the twigs and branches of this deciduous shrub begin to sprout new growth. The first growth consists of leaves, enclosing the beginnings of flower buds. Observe how the fuzzy leaves grow at about the same rate as the round flower buds. Also, the growth occurs in pairs from opposite sides of the branch. Some of the spring growth includes leaves without flower buds. Each paired sprouting of leaves has two leaves. The leaves have short petioles. The round flower buds soon show brown strap-like sepals and petals. Flower buds grow singly from each of the paired opposite sets of leaves. Again, notice the short leaf petiole along with the short stem supporting the growing flower. The flower's exterior parts are clearly defined as maroon brown strips of sepals and petals. Here we can see the paired new growth along a length of the Carolina allspice branch. The flowers open and begin emitting their spicy fragrance, which reminds me of cooking spiced apples. Coming upon the fragrance of Carolina allspice in an area causes me to immediately look around for this bush. Even as the flower opens and ripens, the tips of its petals begin to brown. Timothy Spira, author of Wildflowers and Plant Communities of the Southern Appalachian Mountains and Piedmont, wrote a description of the pollination process. Sweet shrubs, nectarless flowers have a strong fruity odor that attracts small beetles that become trapped in the flowers. When a flower first opens, a few of the outer petal-like sepals open while the innermost petals curl inward, creating a passageway down to the stigmas. Beetles that crawl down this corridor get trapped inside the flower, and as they struggle to find an exit, they brush pollen, deposited on their bodies from a previously visited flower, onto the receptive stigmas. After one to two days, the anthers open, the trapped beetles get dusted with fresh pollen, and the inner petals reflex, releasing the beetles to visit other flowers. At this point, the flower turns brown and loses its scent. After the initial flush of blooms, Carolina allspice puts forth more leaves and more flowers into the summer months. Here are images of the flower petals dying. Notice the peculiar bumps on the green portion below the dying petals. The petals shrivel and drop off. This photo shows dying petals in the foreground and stripped flowers in the background. The brown branches have white dots or lenticels. One method that Carolina allspice uses to propagate is growing sprouts from its roots. Thus, it can create a thicket of bushes. Mature leaves grow in pairs, just as they arose in the spring from the branches. A bruised leaf has a bit of a spicy aroma, different from the flower's fragrance. The leaf is oval in shape, with a pointed tip and an entire or smooth margin. The pinnate venation creates an embossed look on the upper surface of the leaf. The underside is lighter in color and exhibits prominent veins. Once again, here are the short leaf petioles. The same plant may have leaves which are narrower and might therefore be classified as elliptic 
versus ovate. Observe the U-shaped leaf scars from the previous year's leaves. Returning to the fertilized flowers. The beginning shape of the seed pods is evident. Again, look at these curious bumps on the new seed pod. And now the seed pod is growing with the bumps turning into waves along the surface. A single seed pod might grow along a branch. Or there might be multiple seed pods weighing the branch down. The seed pods can grow three, possibly four inches long. As summer progresses, the seed pods begin turning a lime green color and then yellow with areas of brown. Notice the distinctive waves or bumps on the surface. Stems are strong to support the seed pods. This grouping includes seed pods turning from yellow to full brown. Here's a seed pod which is nearly all brown. When completely brown, the Carolina Allspice seed pod contains fully developed seeds. See where the flower's petals grew and how firmly attached the seed pod remains? Let's pick and open a seed pod to discover what its seeds might look like. Oh my! What large, beautiful seeds it has! I wonder if the seeds would look different with the seed pod from the prior year. The bush retains the seed pods for a long time. On the left is the current year's seed pod. When I opened it, there was a distinct aroma, very much like the bruised leaves, but not the same as the flowers. On the right is last year's seed pod. The seeds are basically the same, just a bit darker, and last year's seed pod itself is more brittle. The inside of the seed pod is almost velvety with fine hairs. Let's pry open the brown seed. Ah, the dark brown is a firm cover for the white seed. As summer moves into fall, the leaves begin changing color. Some Carolina allspice leaves gradually turn a shade of lime green. Others may quickly shift to yellow. Generally, there's a mix of lime green, yellow, and brown colors. Until all the leaves are bright yellow, and then yellow tinged with brown. Brown seed pods remain through fall, winter, and the following year. This is Angeline. Thank you for watching and learning about Calicanthus floridus, also known as Carolina allspice. Visit IdentifyThatPlant.com for more images of Carolina Allspice, for plant identification resources, and for information about how you can confidently master the skill of correct plant identification.